Welcome back my turtles to another art video with Foxfoot Crafts. And today's video is going to be a little bit quicker. I have this Ghost Racer comic that the cover is made of the same material as the book itself. You can see the shine to it. The paper is very, very thin. It's the same as the plastic of the paper. And so without even trying, I know that this is not going to hold ink. So with this, you know, I was thinking at first, oh yeah, I'm just going to sketch on it, but the graphite from my pencil just does not want to stick on this plastic. Um, so that being said, I'm not going to be able to do a detailed piece like I would normally do my comic book blanks. Um, I do want to have at least a little bit of a rough sketch just so... I'm not ruining a cover, but it's gonna have to be something super simple to go on this. So I decided that I'm, I'm just gonna go with a very basic skull. You know, they're quick, they're easy, um, and it, it matches Ghost Racers. So um, just doing a nice loose little sketch that I'll use my light board on. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you do know that I've complained about the, you know, inconsistencies in comic book covers. And so some of them, the paper is very crisp and takes the alcohol ink from my markers very well. And then others are sort of this, like, amalgam of plastic and Bristol board and and it doesn't take my ink as well or where the ink like sits on top of it or it'll soak in and kind of give it a blotchy appearance and so there's there's always kind of been inconsistencies there but this is the first one that I have had that the cover is just it doesn't even it doesn't even seem like a variant cover. It, it's the same material as the pages themselves. So again, the paper is very, very thin. It's shiny. It's got that plastic waxy. I mean, when when you open up a comic book and, and that, maybe I need to go back and compare because it feels like an older comic book or maybe this was a free comic from like free comic book day. Um, it just, very thin. So I know that I will not be able to use my markers on it, that the ink will just smear and get all over the place. And I, I don't want to waste it. I don't want to just leave this comic to the side. I do want to try to utilize it. So I'm just going to do a nice little easy skull to go on here, you know, leave it black and white, just a quick little sketch. It's also got a tiny little ghost rider in the center of the page. I'm not sure what's up with that, but that's okay. I don't mind my little skull having his face in there, so. I am having trouble with the plug on my light board. I don't know if I caught it on something or what, but it's it's bent and so it doesn't want to attach as easily. So I apologize for the delay. Throw that guy up here. Get the comic. Put him on there as well. I need to darken this because even though the paper is so thin, it's got printing on the other side of it, so I can't just easily see through it like I want. So I'm just going to use my Sharpie, go over, darken the lines so I can hopefully see it through the page. Mm -hmm. 
looks like you can see, I think it says lap dance or something. I, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but you can tell that it, it makes it very difficult to use the light board and be able to see through. So I'm not using my normal alcohol markers. I'm just going with the good old fashioned Sharpie. I'm hoping it's a little bit more permanent that maybe this Sharpie will sink into this plastic a little bit easier than my alcohol markers. I also have to make a point of starting on that side of the paper. Um, I am left-handed. And so I have a bad tendency of dragging my hand through my artwork and getting ink on my hand. But because this paper is so plasticky and I know that it's going to have the ink sitting on top of it, not only is it going to get the ink on my hand, but it's, it's going to smear it on the comic. So it's, it's kind of like painting. I have to put some of this color down and then let it dry. To work around so so see right there I had to lift my hand up to make sure that I didn't smear it down in that ink. My, my natural tendency, I, I want to start on the other side, so it, it's kind of a hard habit to break. That gives me the basic idea so I don't have to use the light board anymore. I can just go at it from there. Adding some shading and because I don't want it to just be a line art piece. I do want it to have a little bit of depth to it. So I'll go through and I'll thicken up some of the lines and Add some shading in there. Now I did not do a time lapse on this one because I knew it was going to be a short drawing. I, I'm not doing the heavy line art or all the multiple colors and so this, this is a little bit more just real time. So if you've watched my other videos you know that I significantly speed them up in order to be able to put out videos that aren't just hours and hours and hours long. 
but since I knew that this was going to be a quicker piece, I just went ahead and posted the whole thing. No time lapse. I know what I said, and I know I said I wasn't going to use my other markers, but it felt like it needed just a little bit of color. So I did end up using my markers just a little bit. Um, I tried this one and it, it actually looked terrible on the paper. So set that one aside and pulled out a different brush alcohol marker to kind of add some flames in there because what is... You know, Ghost Rider without flames. And even touching up that little eye in the center because of this plastic, it it smeared the Sharpie. It is a difficult material to work. decided to put my signature on it nice and big. Normally I try to make my signature pretty small on the covers, but since this was a pretty basic cover, I went with a bigger signature. I tried using a gray to put in a little bit of shadowing, but ultimately it dried and you couldn't see it too much. It, it kind of weathered into the paper. I don't know if I like it or not. So. So decided to try flipping it over and putting my stamp on the back, which I immediately regretted. It smears and I had to sit there and wait for it to dry. But my final result is this fellow right here. I think it turned out okay, honestly, for it to be a quick little book. This piece will be available for sale if anyone is interested. You can email me, boxfootcrafts at gmail.com. My commissions are always open if you had something else that you wanted in mind. You can also reach out. We can discuss it. Thank you everybody for tuning in.